Holy Spirit, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father, for your grace. Thank you, God, for your mercy, Lord. Thank you for waking me up today, God. Lord, I just dedicate this whole day to you. I surrender my life to you. I surrender this day to you. I plead the blood of Jesus over my mind. I plead the blood of Jesus over my heart, God, over my emotions, God. Holy Spirit, I just take on right now the helmet of your salvation, Jesus. I put it on. Holy Spirit, I put on the breastplate of your righteousness, God, your goodness, your mercy, Lord. I put on the belt of truth, Lord, your truth in humility, God. I put it on the belt of truth that no lies will come out of my mouth, God, not even one white lies, God. I put on the belt of your truth. I put on the shoes ready to share your gospel of peace, God, that everywhere I go, I'm ready and equipped, Lord, to share your gospel. Lord, equip me, Holy Spirit, with your gospel. Speak through me, God, in Jesus' mighty name. I take up the shield of faith that every single lying devil get bound up that tries to speak and implant lies into my mind, bring in doubt and unbelief into my mind. I bind it before it even comes in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And I take up the shield of faith that every fiery dart of the enemy falls down in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And I take up the sword of your spirit, God, which is your word, Lord, that every single lying devil be cut up and sliced and diced in Jesus' name. Your word is sharper than any two-edged sword, Lord, dividing the soul and spirit. So Holy Spirit, I pray that you lace my tongue with your word, Lord. You lace my lips with your sword, Jesus Christ, with your word, the sword of the spirit, Lord, that I be able to do your will effectively and efficiently in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. And also, guys, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna say this. I'm gonna about to keep on praying, um, and this is just a blueprint. You don't gotta say verbatim, but um, also when I'm speaking in tongues, some people might get freaky deaky. Oh, tongues is ceased. It's not ceased. It's in the Bible. It's in the Book of Acts. People do it. Christians do it. And there's different types of tongues. The tongues that I was saying right now um, is um, uh, edification. The Bible says that there's there's different types of tongues. The one to edify yourself. There's another tongue when you don't know what to to pray. The Holy Spirit will pray for you. And sometimes when I'm in prayer in the morning, I'll, I'll just start speaking in tongues. I'm like, Holy Spirit, what do you want me to pray about? And then the Holy Spirit, as I speak in tongues, in my head, like the Holy Spirit will interpret the tongues and I'll know, okay, pray for this. So yeah, that's that's just to let you guys know. It's not freaky deaky. Uh, this video isn't about speaking in tongues, so I'm not going to go into that. Maybe I will in a future video. But yeah, it's a powerful weapon. It is a powerful weapon. Just just doing that, just putting on the full armor of God every single day, will do, I guarantee you, you'll see a change in 2024 if you do that. If you put on the full armor of God intentionally every day, you surrender. You say, God, I surrender to you this day. I surrender my day to you. I surrender my finances to you. I surrender my work to you. I surrender my life to you this morning. I surrender and consecrate myself to you before I even step out of this house and I put on the full armor of God. Watch what God's going to do. Watch. Watch. And you're gonna feel refreshed. You're gonna feel. Yeah, you're gonna feel encouraged. You're gonna feel encouraged. That you said, man, the God of the universe is on my side. I know He answers prayers. I know He hears His children when they cry out to Him. So, Amen. So that's that's the first thing that I do. And then after that, I'll just start praying for the places that I'm gonna go before I even get there. You see, because everything starts off in the physical realm. I rebuke that. Everything starts off in the spiritual realm. So if I take authority, like Jesus says, I've given you the authority to trample over every snake and scorpion in my name, Luke 10, 19. If you take authority over the region that you're already about to go into before you even go into it, you've already won the battle before it's even started. So that's what I do. I just be like this. Holy Spirit, right now in the name of Jesus, I just plead the blood of Jesus over every single section of field and territory that you have called me to evangelize today, that you've called me to walk in today. Lord, I bind up any single demonic force and presence there, and I loose warring angels in the mighty name of Jesus to subdue those demons right now in Jesus' mighty name, that I walk there and take authority, that I take territory for the kingdom of heaven. For your word says, Jesus, that the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, and the violent take it by force, God. And I'm not going to go in with the physical sword, Lord, but I'm going to go in with the sword of the spirit laced in my tongue and I'm going to bind up every single lying devil, Luke 10, 19, in the mighty name of Jesus. I will not fear for you are with me, Jesus. Lord, 
Robokoto, that every spirit of depression, God, be bound up, Lord. Every spirit of lust be bound up, God. Every spirit of unbelief be bound up, God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Every spirit of pride, that, that God hating, that people hate God, I pray that it be bound up right now, that their hearts be softened before I even step into these territories, God. Holy Spirit, that any single demonic attacks and plans and plots for my own life, for my family's life, in, in those regions, I plead the blood of Jesus and I destroy, dismantle them and fragment them in the name of Jesus Christ before they even come, before they even attack in Jesus' mighty name. A hedge of protection around me as I go into these territories. A hedge of protection and wall of fire around me as I step out today in the mighty name of Jesus. Protect my steps for your word says that you, the, the angel of the Lord surrounds and encamps around those who fear you, God. And I fear you, Lord. I put you first in everything that I do. You're the center of my life, God. Protect me. Protect my steps. Guide me, Holy Spirit. I want to hear your voice so clear today. I want to hear your voice clearer than ever before, God. I want glory to glory to glory. I want more of you. If there's more of you, I want more of you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Shalom. <clears throat> One of the most common of the sign gifts is the speaking in tongues. So tonight we begin in that area of uh, studying from the Word of God about speaking in tongues. Now, the charismatic movement as we would know it really is a 20th century evolving or uh, it's evolved in the 20th century. And it began in the United States just prior to the 20th century. The charismatic movement has grown to become one of the most active, outspoken, and really growing type of movements uh, in the in the decade of the 70s especially. Now, some would say that the reason, one of the main reasons that it just seemed to really shoot up like a rocket uh, was because many mainline denominations became boring. And formalized and, and somewhat dead, and so people were looking for something new and different and exciting. And it should not surprise you that the charismatic movement gets its name very easily. It's charismatic. <laughs> Just because something is charismatic and has the form of religion does not mean it's biblical. And there is a real lack of doctrine in the charismatic movement. And because doctrine does divide. And so many of the, those in the charismatic movement are very soft in areas of doctrine because they want to appeal to the masses. And unfortunately, that philosophy or that mindset, that idea has invaded a lot of good churches. Or what were good churches? And even in some churches that call themselves Baptist churches. 
But we need to understand what does the Bible say. That's the most important thing is what does the Bible say. And uh, so I'm going to read. Uh, want you just to stay where you are in uh, the verses that I ask you to find. But I want to recall to our memory a uh, passage from the book of Isaiah, chapter number eight. And Isaiah 8 and 20 says to the law and to the testimony if they speak not according to this word it is because there is no light in them so if a person's doctrine if their belief system does not line up with the word of God there's no truth in them that's what Isaiah says and we can take time tonight to talk about the historical aspects of the charismatic movement but we're not going to we can talk about uh, the laughing revivals and the barking revivals and uh, the, 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 the lack of ethics that has come uh, from the charismatic movement. And when I say lack of ethics because many charismatic movement leaders mishandle and misrepresent the word of God. So we really want to focus on what does the Bible say about speaking in tongues? Now, I, I want to be clear before we uh, look at these two passages of Scripture. We might refer to the Pentecostal movement or the Assemblies of God, and they're kind of at the center of the charismatic movement. But they're not alone. There are charismatic Methodists, charismatic Catholics, and Presbyterians, which I have a hard time imagining. <laughs> uh, and other denominations, even charismatic Baptist you can call I could I could say guess what I'm Donald Trump but just because I declare that doesn't mean that's true and you can say I'm a millionaire but just because you say that does not mean that's true if that's true let's talk after service okay? <laughs> you can say I, you know, I'm Luka Modric but I know that's not true when you want to hear <laughs> just because someone says this is who I am or this is what I am does not mean it's true. My point is simple. There's a lot of people in the world today that call themselves Christians. And there are churches that say they're Baptists. That doesn't necessarily mean it's true. So I want to try to simplify um, this area of speaking in tongues and the most important thing that we can do is look at what does the Bible say. So let's begin in 2 Corinthians 11, please. 2 Corinthians 11, and verse number 11, Paul writing to the church at Corinth, this is his second letter to the church of Corinth. This is a church that had a lot of issues, a lot of problems. And so look at, uh, I think I said verse 11, begin at verse number 10. As the truth of Christ is in me, no man shall stop me of this boasting in the regions of Achaia. Wherefore, because I love you not, God knoweth, but what I do, that I will do, that I may cut off occasion from them which desire occasion, that wherein they glory, 
they may be found even as we are. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if, if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Počnemo s tihu 10. Tako mi pristale istine u meni, ove mi hvale nitko neće oduzeti u ajeskim krajevim. Zašto? Jer vas ne ljubim? Bo znam. Ali što činim, činit ću i dalje, da mogu oduzeti prigodu onima koji traže prigodu da bi se u onome čime se hvale našli da su kao, i, kao mi. Jer takvi su ljudi lažni apostoli, prijavani radnici koji se pretvaraju u Kristove apostoli. Nije ni čudo jer se sam Sotona pretvara u anđela svijetu. Stoga nije ništa osobito ako se njegovi službenici pretvaraju kao da su službenici pravednosti. Paul speaking at the church at Corinth has been encouraging them about their sin and need for repentance. He has been addressing the church at Corinth and saying, look, these things are wrong and they need to be made right. And in the second letter in particular, he is encouraging them to be a church that is pure and that honors God in all things. And so as we come to the passage that we just read, Paul is giving them this admonition this morning. He's like, you have to realize that just because someone says that they're a minister of God, let them be revealed. Kaže, samo zato što neko kaže da je uh, službenik Boži, nek se, nek se otkriju. Satan is the, uh, he is the, uh, uh, he disguises himself, he proclaims to be an angel of light. Sotona se uh, preobrašava, pre, preobrašava i kaže da je uh, anđel svjetla. So why would it surprise you if his workers do the same thing? Zašto bi vas i naravilo ako njegovi službenici rade isti stvar? And so, I hope that you understand the reason, the purpose of reading 2 Corinthians. Paul is saying, just because someone declares themselves to be a minister of the gospel does not mean it's so. And be careful lest they bring false doctrine into what God desires to be a pure church. Let's also remember when he's speaking to the church at Corinth, he's speaking to the individual born again baptized believers of that local body. Uh, I uh, zapamtimo, znači, kad se obraća u drugoj poričanima, uh, obraća se uh, individu, individualnim kršćanima, uh, kršćanima u tom lokalnom tijelu. And, and he's saying, look, you as an individual believer, make sure that you remain pure. I kaže, ti individualni vjernič, and that your, siguran da ćeš biti čist. Sorry. That your doctrine is straight. I da je tvoja doktrina uh, Don't let these ministers of false light persuade you or lead you. Ne dozvoli da te ovi lažni službenici svjetla uvjere i odvedu. So, with that in mind, and having talked about the charismatic movement, let's go back to Acts chapter 2. S tim na umu je o tome da smo govorili o karizmatskom pokretu, idemo na dijela poglavlje 2. And let's see, what does the Bible say about the day of Pentecost in speaking in tongues? I da vidimo što Biblija kaže o Pentecostu, o perisetnici i o govoru jezici. Acts chapter 2 verse number 1 And when the day of Pentecost was fully come they were all with one accord in one place and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house where they were sitting and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire and it sat upon each of them and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. We'll stop there and then continue in a moment. A kad je napokon došao dan predesetnice, svi su bili složno na jednom mjestu. I odjednom je došao kuk s neba, kao kad navaljuje sivan vjetar te ispunio svu kuću gdje su sjedili. I pred njima su se pojavili razdjeljeni jezici kao od ognja, te su uh, posjeli na svakoga od njih. 
I svi su se oni napunili duha svetoga te počeli govoriti drugim jezicima kako im je već duh dao govoriti. Uh, let's just point out in verse 2. Yeah, there was this sound of a rushing mighty wind, there was not actually a rushing mighty wind. And it appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire. It was not literal fire, and it and it was it had the appearance thereof. And finally from verse 4, notice while they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. They spake as the Spirit gave them utterance. So here's a note to remember, and we'll come to it even more specifically in just a moment. We know that all throughout the Word of God, God is a God of order. Znamo da je kroz pismo, kroz Božju riječ, vidimo da je Bog, Bog reda. He even gives instruction, let all things be done decently and in order in the church. Čak daje uputu, neka sve bude ispravno i prema redu. And so while they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, they spake as the Spirit gave them utterance. There's an order that is implied and understood they spake as the spirit gave them utterance. Verse number five. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. Now when this was noise abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded. Why? Because that every man heard them speak in some gobbledygook gibberish. That's not what it says. Every man heard them speak in his own language. A tamo su je uzeli mu živjeli židovi, pobožni ljudi i svakog naroda pod nebom. A kad se to razglasilo, mnošto se skupilo i zbunilo se. Zašto? Jer je svatko čuo kako govore glebetanje. Ne, nego njihovim vlastitim jezikom. And notice verse 7, and they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? How we hear er, uh, how hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born. I svi su bili zadivljeni i začuđeni govoreći jedan drugom. Gle, nisu li svi ovi što govore Galilejci? Pa kako mi čujemo svakoga na svojem jeziku u kojem smo se rodili? And then they began to define or or to mention Parthians and Medes and Elamites and the dwellers in Mesopotamia and in Judea and Cappadocia in Pontus and Asia Phrygia and Pamphylia in Egypt and in the parts of Libya about Cyrene and uh, strangers of Rome Jews and proselytes Cretes and Arabians we do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God i sad ispominje Parti i Međani, i Elamljani, i stanovnici Mesopotamije, i Judeje, i Kapadocije, Ponta, i Azije, Frigije, i Pamfilije, Egipta i dijelova Libije, krajeva oko Cirene, i tuđinci iz Rima, Židovi i Prozeliti, Krećani i Arapi, čujemo i kako govore našim jezicima o čudesnim Božim djelima. Uh, this, I think, is one of the most glaring examples and truths that's so easy to understand about the biblical aspect of speaking in tongues. It doesn't just say it once. It doesn't just say it twice. It says three times that every man heard in their own tongue. Tri puta da, da ih je svaki čovjek čuo u njegovom vlastitom jeziku. There was not some unknown heavenly language like is portrayed among the charismatic movement. Uh, to nije nekakav nepoznati uh, anđeoski jezik, uh, uh, jezik neba kako ga danas protetiraju uh, karizmanici. I'm not encouraging you to find it and watch it, but if, if you ever see it on a video, it is a bunch of gibberish. Ne, ne ohrabruje vas da to gledate, ali ako vidite to na, negdje na videu, vidjet ćete to uh, hrpa, to, to, vrbljanje. And they say it is a heavenly language. It's an unknown tongue. Kaže da to nebeski jezik, nekakav nepoznati jezik. But the Bible makes it very clear. Every man heard. So these Gal- they even say these are all Galileans. They're speaking to us in one language, but we're all hearing it in our own. I, I kažu, znači mi smo svi, uh, oni su Galilejci, ali svaki od nas čuje da govori na našim vlastitom jeziku. 
And more than once the Bible reports they are all shocked. They're amazed. How is this possible? Because they clearly understood in the language from which their country, from which they were born. That would be like me speaking in, in French and everyone hearing it here, whether it be in Croatian or English. To bi je kao da ja sad govorim hrvatski i svi to svi ne čuju da govorim uh, hrvatski ili englesi. Oui. <laughs> it just, I, it, it's, it's crazy to, to, to miss this aspect. This is the biblical pattern of tongues. Ludovski pro, propustiti ovaj aspekt, to je biblijski uh, govornjest. But this babbling, this gibberish that is experienced and promoted in the charismatic movement is not of God. Whether they be psychologically induced, when the conscious mind loses control and the subconscious takes over, whether it is under the influence of satanic oppression that, that this comes about, bilo da je to zbog toga što se događa uh, sotonski pritisak i zbog toga to izlazi van. Or if it's just part of a show. Ili je samo dio predstave. And I have, I've watched videos where charismatic preachers try to teach their people, okay, if you just do this, do it this way, you'll learn how to speak in tongues. I gledao sam videe gdje uh, uh, karizmatski propovednici uče ljude da evo samo ako ovo napravite, naučite govoriti u jezicima. So, Number one, let's understand that the Bible defines tongues as a known, understandable foreign language. Broj jedan, shvatimo da Biblija definira jezik kao poznati i razumljivim stan jezik. Now let's go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 1 this time, please. Vratimo se u prvu korinčanima poglavi 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Prva korinčanima poglavi 1. The Bible defines tongues as a known, understandable foreign language. Biblia definira jezika kao poznate, razumljive za stran jezik. The Bible also clearly shows that tongues was a sign specifically for unbelieving Jews. Biblia također kaže da su jezici bili znak specifično za nevjerne židove. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse number 22. Prva Korinčan ima 1 i 22. But we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block and unto the Greeks foolishness. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 22. Sorry, sorry. That's my first. Verse 22. For the Jews require a sign and the Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block and unto the Greeks foolishness. The speaking in tongues was given as a sign gift for the proof or the uh, for the proof or for the evidence of proving that Jesus was who he said he was he was and is the Messiah za dokaz toga da Isus je ono što je rekao da je, a to je uh, Mesija. Go back to chapter 14, please, 1 Corinthians 14. Vratite se u prve korinčane 14, molim vas. Verse 21 and 22. Stihovi 21 i 22. In the law it is written, With men of other tongues and other lips will I speak unto this people, and yet for all that will they, and, and yet for all that will they not hear me, saith the Lord. Wherefore tongues are for a sign, very specific, tongues are for a sign, not to them that believe, but to them that believe not, but prophesying serveth not for them that believe not, but for them which believe. U zakonu je zapisano, kroz ljude drugih jezika i drugih usana govorit ću ovom narodu, a ipak mi ne tako neće poslušati, govori gospodin. Zato nisu jezici znak za one koji vjeru, nego za one koji ne vjeru, a prorokovanje nije za one koji ne vjeru, nego za one koji vjeru. So we see tongues very specifically, they were for the Jew as a sign. And number two, not only that, but if you notice again uh, verse number uh, 22, wherefore tongues are for a sign, 
to them that are not to them that believe, but to them that believe not. And yet, in the charismatic movement, when we see uh, whatever denomination that believes in speaking in tongues, it is not for the unbeliever, but it's admonishing the believer and building them up. A opet kako vidimo kao izmasko pokretu, znači oni to koriste kao ne kao znak za nevelike, da kao za vjernike, da ih podigne, da ih opravi. And how many of those churches and how many of those people in those churches are Jews? I koliko od tih ljudi u tim crkvama židova? And how many of them are unbelieving Jews? Just think about this from a common sense perspective. Unbelieving Jews are not going to go, chances are, are not going to go into a charismatic church so that they can see a sign. There are only, in addition to this, let's realize there are only three instances that speaking in tongues is recorded in the Bible. And in every single case, there were Jews present and at least one apostle. Guess what? There are not any apostles today. There's another evidence, and it was a biblically understood, we understand, a, an apostle had to be present. Uh, and Jews present. We find that if you're taking notes, Acts chapter 2, verse 5. Uh, Acts chapter 10, verse 45 and 46. And Acts chapter 19 and verse number 6. Those are the only three examples in Scripture where tongues are recorded in the Bible. Now, I'm going to mention this later, but if, if that is the case, then why are so many other of our biblical writers not mentioning anything about it? Iako je to toliko važno, zašto niti jedan od drugih, zašto toliko pisci i Biblii uopće ne govore ništa o tome? If tongues were so important and every believer should seek it to speak in tongues, why do the other apostolic writers not mention it in Scripture? Ako su jesi toliko važni za svakog vjernika, zašto drugi apostolski pisci ništa ne govore o njima? Again, that's just a common sense defense or helping us to understand. To je samo prna zdravog razuma, da pomogne da razumijem. Now let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter. Not only do we have the things that we've already mentioned, that the modern day charismatic movement does not match up to, the Bible defines tongues as a known, understandable foreign language. It was a sign to unbelieving Jews. And Jews and at least one apostle were, were present in every biblical instance. But the Bible also tells us that songs, songs, that is tongues and seats put together. That tongues will cease. Biblia također kaže da će jesti prestati. First Corinthians 13, verse number 8. Prva Korinčan ima 13 stih 8. Charity never failed. But whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. Ljubav nikad ne prestaje. A kad bi bila proročanstva, prestala bi. Kad bi bili jezici, umukno bi. Kad bi bilo znanje, šeznalo bi. Jer djelomično spoznajemo i djelomično prorokujemo. Ali kada dođe ono savršeno, tada će ovo djelomično nestati. I think most everyone agrees that this passage makes it clear that when that which is in part is done, then that which it will be done away, right? 
When that which is perfect is come, that which is in part shall be done away. So what is this which is perfect? Well, that which is perfect is talking about the complete revelation of Scripture. It's the perfect that that's re refers to the complete revelation of Scripture, the written word of God, complete. Uh, know what Paul is saying. Charity, love, it, it's never going to be in inefficient. It will never uh, decay. It's not going to be uh, abolished. But prophecies and knowledge will cease. They will vanish away. Now, the same Greek word is used for fail and vanish. Tongues will cease. They will, they will stop. They will come to an end. So the charismatics, what, what do they say about this passage of scripture? Well, they refer to verse number 10 and say that that which is in part, or that which is perfect is come, is Jesus. It's referring to Christ. And I'm being a uh, I want to say the word facetious. I, I'm, I'm being uh, unkind would be another way of saying. It. But excuse me, are you that ignorant to think that God is that dumb? Uh, well, what do you mean, Pastor? That God is so dumb that He made a mistake. And that God, instead of saying, if he meant Jesus, he could have said, then when he, which is perfect, is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. God's just too dumb that he said that instead of he. Everybody understand what I'm saying? God did not make a mistake. He used the word when that which is perfect. That is not a proper pronoun. Jesus is not a that. He is a he. Everybody understand? And so we need to understand that, that this is not, it cannot be referring to Christ. And many times they'll they'll go back to the book of Joel. Take your Bible, go to Joel in chapter number two, please. Uh, Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, the book of Joel. What is it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Joel. <laughs> Joel in chapter two. And verse number 28. And it shall come to pass that afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit. And I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be delivered as the Lord has said and in remnant and, and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. Joel 2, 28. I dogodit će se poslije ovoga da ću izliti duha svoga na svako tijelo. I sinovi će vaši i kćeri vaše prorokovati, starci će vaši sanjati sne, mladići će vaši gledati viđenje. Isto tako ću na sluge i na sluškinje izliti duha svoga u te dane. I pokazat ću čudesa na nebesima i na zemlji, krv i ogan i stupove dima. Sunce će se pretvoriti u tamu, a mjesec u krv, prije nego što dođe dan Gospod velik i strašan. I dogodit će se da će svaki koji prizove ime Gospodnje biti izbavljen. 
jer će na gori Sionu i u Jeruzalemu biti izbavljenje, kako je Gospod rekao, i u statku koga će Gospod pozvati. But this passage of, of scripture is not speaking about his first coming. This is speaking about the second coming of Christ. This is speaking about the tribulation period, which takes place after the rapture and before the second coming of Christ. And, and so it's understanding that tongues is going to cease when that which is perfect is come, meaning the complete revelation of the Word of God. Not the coming of Christ, but the complete Word of God. And Paul's not, he's not shy about speaking about the second coming, and the coming of Christ. So, let me remind you, if Paul were referring to Christ in his coming, why didn't he mention it? That's what I was just saying earlier. I mean, we're just talking about 1 Corinthians 13, and Paul speaks specifically and in detail about the coming of Christ in 1 Corinthians 15, just two chapters later. We spoke only about 1 Corinthians 13, and Paul in detail is talking about the coming of Christ in 1 Corinthians 15, just two chapters later. The Bible is that which is complete. The Bible is that which is complete. Now, Paul wrote this letter to the church at Corinth that several books of the Bible had not been written when he wrote the book to Corinth. But when the Bible, the New Testament, was complete, the Bible as a whole, then the need for miraculous knowledge had ended because the believer could refer to the word of God. Go over to 2 Peter chapter number 1. 2 Peter and chapter number 1. 2 Peter chapter 1 verse uh, number 20 and 21. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Druga Petrova 1, stihovi 20 i 21. Najprije znajte ovo, da nijedno proročanstvo pisma nije nastalo od bilo čijeg osobnog tumačenja, jer proročstvo nekoć nije došlo boljom čovjeka, nego su sveti Boži ljudi govorili poneseni dugom svetu. Pastor, why are you reading these verses? Pastor, zašto čitaš ove riječi? Because the born again believer doesn't need to refer to a divinely inspired person or to a miraculous sign for truth, but can go to the word of God. Zato što se nanovo rođeni vjernik ne mora obraćati nekakvom naravnom čudesnom znanju od čovjeka, nego se može izravno obratiti Bože riječi. And now it is up to the believer as we read the word of God, study the word of God, search the word of God, to either receive it or reject it. I sada je na nama kao vjernicima da kad čitamo, istražujemo, da primimo, da sami još zaberemo, da vjerimo da li ćemo primiti ovo što smo učili. And then something we don't have time to discuss, but it's worth mentioning. It's the fact that the scripture is not only complete, but the scripture completes us. I give you an example. The Bible gives the illustration several times. As newborn babes in Christ desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. Bila više puta spominje primjer kao mala djeca čestite za čistim mlijekom u Božje riječi. Before we close, go back to 1 Corinthians chapter number 14, please. Prije nego što završimo, odite na prvu koričanima pogledaj 14, molim vas. Ok, so let's look at it if we like everything that we just talked about, if we lay that all aside. 
I sad razmislimo o ovome, ako sve ovo što smo, o čemu smo govorili, sve stavimo sa strane. Oh, well, I think you're wrong about that which is complete, or perfect has come, I think that's Jesus, we lay everything else aside. Um, uh, mislim da si u krivu, mislim da ovo što uh, govori u krve po, uh, po, po, uh, poričanjima 13 govori o Isusu, ako sve ovo stavimo sa strane. Because God is a God of order. Zato je Bog, Bog reda. And because he says let everything be done decently and in order. Zato što je rekao da sve, sve se čini uh, 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 ispravno i u redu. If, and I'll repeat that, if, ako i ponovit ću, ako, one more time, if, još jednom, ako, if tongues were still for today, ako su jezici još uvijek za danas, and they're not, a nisu, but if they were for today, the Bible gives restrictions and order by which they were to be used. Ali ako bi bili za danas, uh, Biblija ka- daje uh, ograničenja i uh, uh, naredbe kako ih koristiti. Remember, Paul writing to the church of Corinth is giving them instruction on how they're to behave themselves in the church. Zapamtite da je Pao dao upute kako se svako treba ponašati u crkvi. Look at 1 Corinthians 14 and verse number 27. Pogledajte 1 Korinčanima 14, pogledajte uh, stih 27. And if any man speak in an unknown tongue, let it be by two or at the most by three, and that by course, and let one interpret. Ako tko govori nepoznatim jezikom, neka to budu po dvojica ili najviše trojica, i to po redu, a jedan neka tumači. So it says, let it be done by two or at most by three. Znači kaže, neka budu dvojica ili najviše trojica. No more than three were to speak in an unknown tongue in the meeting. Ne više od trojice su smeli govoriti u nepoznatom jeziku na sastanku. Now we've already determined we know what the it defined what the unknown tongue is referring to. But what do we find in the charismatic movement? We find multiple people, many people all speaking in tongues all at the same time. So even if it was still for today, they are not following God's rule or how it is to be done in the church. And they're not to do it all at once because notice what it says at the universe numbers are in, toward the end, that by course to do it in order. And that, and that by course simply means to do it in order, one at a time, not all at the same time. And then it says, and let one interpret. Now, in the grammatical sense of this verse, that's meaning one of the three to interpret. But even if you want to say, well, that's not one of the three, if it's just one to interpret, guess what does not happen in charismatic churches today? A lot of speaking in tongues, but not one interpreter. And if there is no interpreter, look at the verse, next verse. But if there be no interpreter, let him keep silence in the church and let him speak to himself and to God. So there's a clear rule, if there's no interpreter, be quiet, be silent. And the speaker is to submit to the rules of order. First Corinthians 14, look down at verse number 32. For God is not the author of confusion, but of, I'm sorry, and the spirits and the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets. There's a speak. And follow the rules. Because they are subject to the prophets. But we just can't help ourselves. The Holy Ghost just came on me and I just had to blare it out. No, you. The Holy Ghost, the spirit that's in you, is to follow and be subject to the prophets. Why? Why is that important? The next verse, verse 33. For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace 
uh, as in all churches of the saints. Znači to važno, sljedeći stih, jer Bog nije autor svrke, nego mira, kao što je u svim crkvama sveti. You know, what do we see in charismatic movement today? We see people jumping over the pews and everybody speaking in tongues, and it's mass, it's chaos. Uh, što vidimo u karizmatskim pokretima danas, znači vidimo ljude koji skaču preko redova, svi govori o jezicima, vidimo kaos. Verse number 34 is real popular. I 34 je vrlo popularan. Especially in charismatic churches. Posebno u karizmatskim crkvama. Because we understand the context is about speaking in tongues. Jer pogledamo da je kontekst govori o jezicima. And what does it say? Let the women keep silence in the church. I što kaže? Neka žene vaše u crkvama šute. Now, you can watch videos of charismatic church services, which also have women preachers, which is an oxymoron. Um, and you know what you find? The majority of people in the charismatic church, there's more females than there are males. Now that can be said of a lot of different denominations. But my point is, the reason it's become so prevalent is because women can have a place of prominence and they want to be seen and to speak in tongues and to be exalted ono što želim reći da žene žele imati uh, uh, poziciju uh, uh, vlasti, uh, gdje će se vidjeti, gdje će govoriti u jezicima. But yet, the Bible says about speaking in tongues that women are to keep silence in the church. Ali Biblia kaže u govoru jezicima da žene ne vrši u njih crkvi. If there's a question, let me clarify, women were to never, never to speak in tongues. Ako ima pitanja, pojasniš. Žene su nikad smjela uh, pričati i govoriti u jezicima. And yet we find it prevalent in the charismatic movement. So concluding very quickly. Tongues have ceased, they're not for today, they were signed here. No longer needed because we have the complete revelation of scripture. It's evident because tongues are not mentioned by John, Peter, James, or Jude at all. Just because someone might speak in tongues does not mean that they prove that the Holy Ghost is within them. And it was a sign gift to prove to unbelieving Jews that someone was sent from God pointing to the Messiah. To je bio znakom i da za židove da pokaže da je taj kupa govori da ih upuće prema Isusu, prema Mesima. And then two last verses of Scripture. Zatim zadnje dva stika pisma. If people don't want to listen to any of that, any of the things we mentioned to this point, ako ljudi ne žele slušati ništa od ovog što smo upravo spomenuli, God has infinite wisdom included verse number 29 and verse 23. God 19 and 23. Uh, uh, Bog je u svojoj mudrosti uh, uključio stihove 19 i 23. 1 Corinthians 14, 19. Prva Korinčanima 14. Paul says this, Yet in the church I had rather speak five words with my understanding that by my voice I might teach others also than 10,000 words in an unknown tongue. Paul kaže, ali u crkvi radije kažem pet riječi svojim razumom, da bi se mojim glasom i drugi poučili, nego deset tisuća riječi nepoznatim jezikom. Uh, that's the words of the Apostle Paul under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit of God. To su uh, riječi apostola Pavla pod nadaknućem Svete Duha Božeg. I'd rather speak five words and someone understand those five words than to speak ten thousand in an unknown tongue. Radije bih rekao pet riječi da neko razumije tu pet riječi, nego da govorim deset tisuća riječi nepoznatim jezikom. Verse 23. If therefore the whole church be come together into one place and all speak with tongues, and there come in those that are unlearned or un- unbelievers, will they not say that ye are mad? Paul just saying, hey, use some common sense. Paul kaže, hey, potrebite tako zdravi razvoj. If they're an unbeliever, you look like you've lost your mind. Ako su nevnici, gledajte ko ste poludio. How is that going to draw them to Christ? Kako će to privući Krista? And yet, it's so prevalent. A opet, toliko je prevalent. 
in our world today. What do we believe? Where do we find it? Or, uh, and why do we believe it? And where do we find it? And this in the matter of speaking in tongues. And so we'll continue on about uh, uh, spiritual sign gifts in our next time together next Wednesday.